Hello, let's continue our discussion about hybridization. And let's talk about the hybridization of five and six electron domains. And so let's look at a molecule like PCL5. Its Lewis structure looks something like this. Is trigonal bipyramidal, both electron domain geometry and molecular geometry. We've got the three chlorines that are equatorial and have bond angles of 120 degrees. And then we have the axial chlorines. And those bond angles are 90 degrees from the equatorial positions. And so we need to come up with five hybrid orbitals. We need five hybrid orbitals. So phosphorus is in group, is in the P block. And it's got a neon core, 3s2, 3p3. And because it's in the p-block, it also has empty 3d orbitals that we're going to use to make our hybrid orbitals. So we're going to take the 3s, the 3p, and these empty 3D orbitals. So the two electrons in the 3s2, an electron in each of the 3p orbitals. We're going to promote an electron from the 3s up to one of the three D's. So it takes a little energy to do that, to unpair it. And then we can get, gain that energy back as we hybridize. And that now we're gonna have five hybrid orbitals by combining the 3S, 3P, and 3D each with a single electron in them. And we're gonna have four unhybridized 3D orbitals. There are four of those. And so we have SP3D. SP3D. We got a five of those. They're equivalent. They allow us to have the electron domain geometry that we want. They're all degenerate. And so now those sp3d orbitals can overlap with p orbitals from the chlorine to give us our molecular structure. So now let's see how that looks. We've got our Phosphorus. And it's got these three equatorial, we could call them that, sp3d hybrid orbitals. And these two axial sp3d hybrid orbitals. Now, I've greatly simplified the drawings for these. These really have multiple lobes. Um, a small lobe on the opposite side of where you see these big lobes. So look in your book at those pictures to get that. And we've got a chlorine that's coming in 
was unhybridized orbital, p orbital, and those are the um, 3p orbitals that have a single electron in them. And so you, if you wanted to, you could look at it, the p orbital having an electron and the chlorine bringing an electron. And so that gives rise to our 120 degree bond angles that are equatorial and our 90 degree bond angles between the axial and equatorial positions. So that's SP3D, five hybrid orbitals. So let's look at the case when the electron domains equal to six around our central atom. Something like sulfur hexafluoride. And we're going to do a very similar process to what we just did for sp3d. Our sulfur has a neon core 3s2 3p4 but it's got these empty 3D orbitals that we can use. So here's my 3S, my trio of 3P orbitals, and my quintet of 3D orbitals. So we've got two electrons in 3S, and one, two, three, four electrons in my 3P. Got these empty 3D, we want to promote Three D, three P, three S. We're going to unpair those electrons that are in the field three S and three P orbitals, and we'll promote them up to the three D. Cost us energy, but then we can get it back when we hybridize. And so now I'm going to have six hybrid orbitals. And what's left over are three, a trio of 3D unhybridized orbitals. And that the number of orbitals has to be conserved. Then what we start out with has to be the number we ended up with. So we start out with nine unhybridized orbitals between the 3S, 3P, and 3D. And now we've got nine orbitals that were all said and done. Six of them are hybrid, three of them are unhybridized. And so now we've got six electrons. They can put an electron in each of those hybrid orbitals. And these are sp3d2 orbitals. sp3d2. And that those superscripts are telling us how many of those particular orbitals we're using. We're using a single s. We're using three P, a trio of P's, and a duo of D's. And so here's our sulfur. Once again, I'm going to only draw the large lobe of these. All that have all these really have double lobes to them. And so this is really three dimensional, and all of those bond angles are 90 degrees. And if you want to think of them as bringing in electron a piece and then my fluorines have an imp have their trio of p orbitals one of them has a single electron so there's a fluorine here's a fluorine here's a fluorine here's a fluorine Here's a fluorine, and last but not least, this fluorine with his p orbital that only has um, one electron in it. So they each bring in an electron, they're sharing them. Covalent bonds gives us an octahedral electron geometry, electron domain geometry, and an octahedral molecular geometry for all those bond angles are 90 degrees we've got these six hybrid orbitals that we've used to create this molecule or explain the bonding actually 
these atoms don't know that they're hybridizing. These electrons don't know where they're going. Um, they just do that. And this is how we go about explaining it through this hybridization theory.